die. Gay lore. A game's background and elements to complement the overarching narrative. Developers often add lore into their games to have a founding structure to build characters off of, and to add depth to the universe you are playing in. Lore gives a lot of insight to the player about how their world runs, the history of the world, and expanding the present concepts already given to us, further enhancing the experience and giving a more immersive playthrough. It is one of the most essential parts in many video games that can make it shine from the rest. But in all reality, the lore can either make, break, or enhance the game you are playing. Get the in the mysterious and mythical world of Hollow Knight, you, as a player, are dropped into this strange, desolate place with absolutely no knowledge except that you heard that this was a good game. As you explore the lands, you get glimpses of the past, giving you more insight on the environment and overall world of Hollow Nest. This type of game is a theorizer's wet dream. When the knowledge is sprinkled throughout the surroundings and hidden, it makes one ponder on the realities of this world. It lets the player create theories and ideas about the intentions of the game designers and how they wanted the world to be. The developer for Hollow Knight strategically made the lore strange and hidden to give little answers and more questions. Character dialogues give stories through their messages, statues give an obvious antiquity giving you even more questions, and texts on the walls are written in like Australian or something, so no one can decipher what they're saying. In a case like this, the lore ends up creating a more entertaining and immersive world making you ponder, further enhancing the experience and beyond its exciting gameplay. These types of qualities in a game are not essential to it at all, but instead are fun details to appreciate. But what I don't appreciate is... The Last of Us series and Uncharted are clinically known as being story-driven games. The story is really the only part worth buying for, but that doesn't make these games bad. In games like this, the mechanics are made uncomplicated and simple, practically spoon-feeding you on what to do. Okay, so I press triangle. It's a bucket. It, it is a bucket, he's huh. not wrong, it is a bucket. Okay. Now what? Uh, I don't know, maybe I filled a bucket with water, because it's a fucking bucket. Oh, crazy. I filled the bucket with water. Bucket filled. Yep, it, I, I, I just it filled me. it. Shit, this is another cutscene. Man, this is a good ass gameplay. So, if that was a test, what do you suppose it was testing exactly? I think it was testing how many fucking times I'm gonna press triangle in this game. The lack of physical gameplay is easily compensated by the quality of the characters, the plot, and the overall aesthetic of the game. They frequently show cutscenes to let you watch what's unfolding instead of actually doing the actions yourself. Thought you'd want to be in. Hey yo, can I play this part? Yeah. This however does not take away from the overall game, in fact, it only complements the lore making you focus more on the real composition and the story of these games. Even though there is an hour and 35 minute video of a compilation of cutscenes. And this is only Uncharted 1. In fact, I really shouldn't even call these games, but instead I think it will do it more justice to just call it an interactive movie. Kind of like one of those 4D movies with smokes and scratch and sniff tickets. Except in those movies, you do more stuff with your hands than you actually do with these types of games. Ah, uh, I wonder how I pick up my 700th ladder in this game. Oh, triangle. No way. When lore makes the game, it takes a lot of the retrospective thinking away, but it leaves you with a good idea of the world and a satisfying and complete story with well-written characters. Games that do well in this make category would be like Skyrim and Dark Souls, because even though their lore is a big aspect in the game, it still keeps that entertaining and exciting gameplay we want at the end of the day. But it still seems like people don't want it. But you know what I do want? Freddy's big old co- when lore is taken a step further, it goes beyond just blatantly summarizing about the world you're playing in, but instead, it makes the player think and reflect on the knowledge they have just acquired. Legendary developer Scott Coffin, famous for creating the ever-approbated title, Five Nights at Gregory's, is renowned for developing and presenting some of the most clandestine lore. The execution for adding this is very ranged. Sometimes it's very simple and sometimes it's very obscure and complex to the point where you need to look into the code of the game or change the brightness of a teaser image. At times, the lore can be found in obvious cutscenes, and in other times, you have to get killed by an animatronic, go into a secret random minigame, get the secret ending in the minigame, go to a secret room, enter a four digit code that was an easter egg in a prior game, while being attacked by an animatronic, and you'll be rewarded with the TVs showing JPEGs of the previous game. Bruh. All that work just to get some JPEGs on your monitors. And they're not even monkeys. Now to any regular player, going out of your way to do a fun little easter egg not only adds to the ominous atmosphere that's present in the game, but lets each player have their own unique adventure going beyond to discover the secrets in the game. However, to a theorizer, this was their resolve. Not only did this tie back into multiple games, filling holes that were left unknown, and answered questions that were troubling theorizers for years, but it finally let them function as a person again. In all the FNAF games, there are countless little easter eggs to expand on the world that enhances the gameplay and 
universe. They can even tie back to previous knowledge, creating a natural story through bits and pieces like a puzzle that feels fulfilling, but never truly complete because of the lack of confirmation from the developers. But how would I know? I never played Five Nights at Freddy's because I'm too scared. However, I have played Five Nights at Funky's, which I'm pretty sure is like the same thing gameplay-wise. When theorizers go too far, it starts to distort and exacerbate the experience for an average player. Here we got Notch, the indie game developer responsible for making Mintzraft, a relaxing game that gives a mellow atmosphere while building houses, exploring caves, and absolutely murkin' on dogs. I'm sure Notch wanted players to have a sense of uncertainty and mystery while playing the game. Going through threatening caves and venturing through the menacing dimensions is fun on its own, so when theories about piglins not being native to the nether doesn't add anything to the gameplay or enhance it in any way that will actually transform the game. I mean, I'm just trying to trade gold with them, I don't really care if they're native or not, it really does not matter. To the physical gameplay and experience of the game, the world, the history, and society does not matter. It doesn't matter that Disc 11 is someone in panic, it doesn't matter what a creeper is, and Harold Bryan isn't real. Yeah, fuck you. Oh wait, oh, uh, what? Did you just disgrace my beloved Minecraft? Even though it may not sound like it, I personally think Mojang did a very good job with their lore. By adding very little traces of it, while keeping essential bits hidden, sometimes in plain sight, it actually adds to the ominous feeling in the game. However, theorizers having these little fun theories are fun, but if official lore was added and set in stone, it would definitely break the game of Minecraft and make it a lot worse. Mainly because it will be taken away from that feeling of curiosity you get while exploring and finding weird things. So having your own personal theories doesn't really ruin it. In fact, it's really part of Minecraft's core gameplay. But when theories try to get 100% confirmed, using evidence for the game, that's when the actual experience of the game starts to fall. Having these strange creatures and dimensions in a game gives it a bewildering aspect that doesn't need to be explained, and is very unique in this game. Until it's ruined by someone telling you that the person you're playing as is actually a god, and you've been playing as an immortal divine being this entire time. Why would you tell me that? Thanks for spoiling the game. When digging deeper into the details of this game, it starts to take away from the bemused charm to it. Personally, when the lore of Minecraft is expanded on and twisted, it starts to degrade the original atmosphere of the game and take away from that original pleasant feeling of ignorance. The Minecraft lore breaks the game of Minecraft. Not every game needs strict lore, especially if the game is based on the unknown. There are a lot of funky mobs that are present here with the universe containing many questions, questions that are better off not solved. Some games are really just better to have as a mystery than answer to have a more immersive and wondrous experience in the game. But honestly, I really don't care what theories you make or whatever your fantasies you're thinking about. I'm just saying that compared to other games with lore, the lore of Minecraft does not enhance the gameplay at all. Now, only if they added Dream into the theories, then I might be a little more invested. The Polymath. Defined as someone who is in possession of great knowledge. The Philomath. Defined as a lover of learning, someone who loves to obtain and learn about things of said knowledge. This has to do with mathematics, so I don't know why I'm really talking about this, but this is similar to the relationship between the game developer and the game enthusiast. But in all reality, I don't care that people make lore for every game ever created. In some games, the lore is handed to you on a paper plate through their mind-numbingly easy gameplay. But lots are executed very well through doing obscure tasks and processing information with other information. People have questions, so people make answers to satisfy their urge to know. So with that being said, that's pretty much the lore on game lore. I'm done.